Good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking the time to join our Instagram live again today. And thank you to Modern Beauty Supplies for hosting us. Uh, my name is Zina Al Sharif, and I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professionals. And today our live is called Roots the Good Kind, and I'm going to be joined by Maggie Melrose in just a minute. And um, we're going to be talking all about like root smudges and root stretches and root shades and all that fun stuff. Um, we're going to really dissect all those words and we're going to dissect all those fun Pinterest photos too that come with those words. So that's going to be cool. But before I let Maggie in, if you guys have any questions during our live today, feel free to put them in the question cards at the bottom there. And I'm also going to be watching the chat box as well. Um, so let me see if Maggie's in here. Oh, there she is. Let's add her in. Hello. Hi. Hi, Maggie. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm really good. I'm so happy to see your face. I'm. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I just want to say we have some hilarious comments right now in the chat. People are saying, I'm so glad I don't have a client right now. Oh, no. I can finally watch. I don't have a client right now. That's so funny. Oh, awesome. oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, just a mid -dedication. This is the new world. I know. It's crazy. Thank you so much for having me, Modern Beauty and Xena. I am Melvin Melrose, a field education trainer in Toronto, Canada. On the other side. <laughs> awesome. And so, so. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to yeah. be. We're going to be dissecting some of those really tough buzzwords that we sometimes get from our clients when they're showing us images. And, uh, we just want to arm you with a better arsenal of uh, confidence to uh, know what to tell them and what they should expect and how many services they need. Yes, exactly. I think some of those words we we get behind the, we hear behind the chair quite a lot from clients, and most of the time they don't even know what they they mean. So, what are some of those words that you hear, Maggie? Okay, so uh, for like a really popular one I've been hearing lately would be root tap. Mm -hmm. Just a little tap, just smudge, <laughs> the shade. Uh, what else? What else have you heard? What what, are the, what does the West what the West give you? I mean, like root shadow, root melt, root shadow, root shade. Now, and I mean, when you look these up, you're not really gonna a crazy range of difference between like it could be any of them right so we want to we want to show you that um, it's not really about these popular buzzwords that our clients really get hooked on and they they think they need the root tap they need the special root tap but they don't really know what that means or what that entails or what kind of maintenance that will give them so techniques are our tools to in our like tool bag to help us achieve all these looks. The buzzwords are like, they kind of add a little bit of mystery. So we want to remove that. So um, yeah. Well, why don't we like dissect these words a little bit? So like, what do you think? What do you like think a root tap is? So a root, a root tap to me is exactly what you say, a tap. It's going to be like the smallest type of root, just a little, just a little tap. But sometimes, when your client, so you would get a client to come in and say, I want a root tap. And then they show you like roots like mine. And you're like, Ooh, okay. Forget root tap. Let's look at shape or shadows. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like when I use a root tap would be like really often, like around the hairline or like around the front where you want to like keep it really nice and bright. You don't want to have a lot of shadow in those areas. So yeah, I agree with you. Like a tap is like a tap. That's a really good point too. I think a lot of the time you're using more than one of these techniques in one session, in one service. So a lot of the time the root tap is the most popular for the hairline and then just so, especially we're keeping like as much light as we can for people because we know that's what they love. 
<laughs> um, what uh, root? Sh what root shade? Root shade. Okay. What comes to mind when you hear root shade? I think tip for me, I think a root shade or like a root shadow or even like a root smudge are all like super similar where you're just kind of giving like a little bit of that shadow on the top and you're not, you're not bringing it super far down or it's not that little bit of a tap that you're maybe putting around the hairline. It's just like that little itty bit of, bit of root. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there, I would say those three are sometimes interchangeable. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. So what about what about like a root like stretch, Ben Maggie? So root stretch to me, that one kind of that one says long to me. It says it says a little bit like I'm gonna go a little bit out of my comfort stretch it a little bit out of what I what I think I should. Um so I think that would be like a more dramatic look, definitely. Um but a root stretch also, to me, would be potentially stretching your client's natural. Oh, good point. How to incorporate your client's, like, natural color into their highlights. You could potentially use something, a technique, like a, a stretch to bring that natural, like, really into the look. Okay. And is that, like, when you're wanting to like maybe grow out your natural a little bit. You're just kind of wanting to like bring that far down a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that could be a person that wants to like transition out of um, like a global blonde or even, um, I think sometimes it's a nice way to like, yeah, just to keep a little bit of you so that the suitability is there. That's, I love that, Maggie. Keep a little bit of you. You, because it all, you know, it looks good. Hair by Jacqueline says, great dissecting of all these terms. I, I know that, like, I personally get overwhelmed, especially when my clients come armed with, like, super Photoshopped photos that 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 I'm just looking at them, and they, they look like 10 processes maybe at, at, in one photo. So it's just you want to be able to sound like you know what you're talking about when, you, that, when your client is going to bring up these, like, popular – buzzy words I think also like with social media right now like Instagram and clients are so like savvy with that too I think they're bringing in a lot of photos and they might even follow the same people as we do like they might even follow like those hair influencers where they're like posting their formulas and they're posting their techniques and they see those words like root tap and root smudge and root shade and they have no idea what any of those actually mean but they see that and they're like this is the picture this is the hair I want yeah make give me this <laughs> <laughs> but it's up to us to decide what technique we're going to use on them because they may have a different starting point right exactly we don't want you to get caught up and like totally stuck on that terminology if it's not if the photo isn't translating that to you that's okay you can educate your client that, that might be something different to you or you're going to call it that but don't get too concerned that that you're not giving them tap or whatever your gut that you know what the image that you're they're showing you you know how to achieve that yes and what about a root melt maggie root melt root melt uh, to me is a little bit similar to a stretch but a root melt kind of makes me feel of an ombre <laughs> does that remember ombre <laughs> remember when you traditionally when you go like right from dark to to light to lighter and there isn't really that like transition of depth throughout Root melt is like, it, it gives me that more like, yeah, like melty ombre vibe. Not so much majority blonde. I wouldn't, when I think of root melt, I don't necessarily think majority blonde. But your client could have a totally different idea of what that means to them. It could be in their mind. Yeah. I mean, so just imagine if you didn't think, if you didn't clarify it. Yeah, I think for me, a root melt is when you are melting multiple tones together yeah. Yeah. to create the look. Absolutely. Okay, so we just have a question here, Maggie. Okay. Um, does a root cover gray? Does a root, well, a root can cover gray, especially a good kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is often a really 
difficult thing to um, kind of navigate when your clients want a really trendy look and they have a need for great coverage. So sometimes those tools that we would typically use to achieve this look wouldn't necessarily be the best to use in a great coverage scenario. So I think you have to talk to your client about how, because personally, to me, a, live, a, root, a rooted look is more lived in, correct? It's mm -hmm. like goes a little longer, lasts a little longer. You don't have to maintain it as much, different types of maintenance. But gray, co gray coverage maintenance is gray coverage. So yeah. a lot of your clients might be attracted to this look because they think, oh, I want to be low maintenance. I want to be, I like maintenance. I'm chill. I don't want to go to the salon all the time. And that may be totally true. And there's other ways to achieve the, those long lasting looks for them. But if we are, um, if we're adding a darker root when, when gray is coming in, right after it, it might not be that look, it's look that we think we're getting with root, with root depth. That's it. Yeah, that's a great point. So it really depends on the clients and what they have already. Yes. absolutely. So to that point, maybe let's talk about some reasons you mentioned some already, but let's talk about some reasons why we would incorporate doing one of these root techniques then. Okay, great. So the one I mentioned already suitability, is that what you're <laughs> that's what you're referring to <laughs> that's a great reason yeah so I mean I love suitability because it is my own personal uh strife I want to be so blonde like everyone else but it doesn't necessarily be right against my skin so I definitely need to incorporate a little bit of me like we were saying to to keep that um that look of of suitability your client, especially, it might be a nice suggestion to suggest to your clients who are bringing you really um, high contrast, really impossible looks for them. You you could say, well, we could maybe work towards this, and maybe let's kind of introduce a root shade because yeah. that shadow because that will give you a little bit more suitability and keep 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 that darkness right against your face that you want to complement you, but it doesn't you can't have that light that. You on. Yeah, I think suitability is such a great point because there are so many clients who want to have it super blonde, um, but it's nice to sometimes still have like that buffer of that natural looking root on top. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like, I, I, I mean, most requested. And when I'm on the when I'm out in the in the streets, it's like the most requested thing. <laughs> You're out in the streets. I'm out in the streets. On the road. <laughs> Um, it's the most requested, I would say, sir. When I was behind the chair, it was the most requested service. I, where I, where I was working, um, people did not want to see where their highlights came from, which was kind of a, a trip. Like it's different than what we're used to, and and everybody's just everybody's tolerance of, of how much root they want will be will be different. Bye, Jacqueline. See you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think another, I think another uh, point to that too, um, for people not wanting to see their highlights that to that point that you just said is um, adding like these root taps and root shades and smudges and all that are a really great way to kind of like have a more seamless look and kind of blur out any of those lines um, and really just give like an overall like more seamless effect too. Yeah, I think, I think like they'll always be the like popular will always have popular dramatic looks but natural is is always going to be in at some point in someone's life they're mm -hmm. going to do especially right now in, in like kind of pandemic times we we maybe need to think about kind of offering our client a little bit of root <laughs> yeah totally so less maintenance another really great reason yeah. to incorporate these roots in um suitability low maintenance what what was our last point blur out any lines give it like a more seamless effect also like it can add like more contrast and more depth especially if you're going with more of like a root stretch or a root melt kind of row um you can add more depth and more like shadows i find too yes. um, um i also think this is a really nice service to offer your clients if 
they potentially are in a, in a position of damage that they can't go lighter, but they would like to be lighter. <laughs> so sometimes, which I mean, is often the case. Um, we, sometimes we can kind of do a little smoke and mirrors to make that light feel lighter by adding more depth at the root. So sometimes when you can't get something light enough, adding more light is always the answer. Sometimes adding some depth and darkness root is, is the answer to get that, those ends looking brighter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why don't we talk about a, a little bit about what, I know you like to use certain things for your root melts and root shades, those fun rooty techniques. Why don't you tell us what you use? Okay, yeah. <laughs> no problem. I have them right here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so for our root that we were talking about, the one that we want to be really clean, it's just a kind of a touch. Uh, I love the small, the, the small Wella brush because I want to be able to control exactly where I'm the color. I don't want to have a, um, any any mess or any surprise. Any, and especially when you're kind of working in people's hairlines, like you want to be able to hit all those angles at like the best possible way instead of flopping the color on. It's going to be a messy one anyway, so you want to keep it as clean as you can. <laughs> um, speaking of clean, I also really love to use the, pa the paddle. Okay. Um, especially if you're bringing the color through, especially in a melt and a stretch situation, you always want to have kind of a surface to, uh, to be combining those colors. And I mean, then you kind of get that magical third color that you've created in the in-between that, you know, is that special something that people are, are, are asking for these days. Um, this keeps my work really clean. This keeps uh, my work saturated. That's another we, we worry about. I see a lot of people use their hand, which is like also totally, totally great. Um, if you can, if you can keep it clean, go for it. Um, another tool that I can't live without is the angled brush especially for um, the melt, the blending in this situation. When we're, when we're, when we're going to be melting those roots into that secondary color, whether it be a mid or the lightest possible color, um, I like, I find this the best way to, uh, to apply that. And last but not least, our, our comb and tint brush. So this is a, a, a great, if you don't like to hold two things in your hand, this is really great. Especially, mm -hmm. um, especially at the sink, like I love it, especially for keeping neatness. Um, do you use this one often? I love that one for like doing root root taps and root shades and all that stuff. It's all it's kind of a similar size brush, so mm -hmm. it does give you the same kind of control. And I love the added feature of the comb, um, yeah. just to kind of add a little. Extra yeah, which we're all about when we're doing root shadows. Yeah, I sometimes like to use that comb to like brush it down a little bit yes yes exactly and even the back of it or um yeah the back of it a little bit and why don't we talk about like what our favorite products are for our root smudges and shades and all that stuff okay so this is also a great a great topic um what uh, my favorite product my always default product for a root for any root depth is color touch because it's not it's going in these scenarios we typically are going to have to be like this hair that we've made darker again so i'm just looking out for future maggie trying to <laughs> make my work a little less and have and, and give my client a little bit more of what they want um so kind of back to what you were saying about uh the great coverage this is a situ this is a situation, a conversation that you have to have with your client. You're adding gray coverage in at the root and they're gonna wanna go just as light as the end the next time. That you might have to there might be a couple lightning services in that might need to happen to get that that color out and get the ends as light or get the mids as light as the ends. Um, but so color touch. Is, is definitely uh, my go-to for that because it, it's going to um, have the most gradual grow out, which you're, you're kind of assuming that your this client wants low maintenance. 
and uh, and it's the easiest to lift through. Yeah, I, and, I love using Color Touch. It's our demi permanent line. It's, you mix it into one to two, so it's really quick and easy to get on as well. Um, I also perfect. love using Illumina too for my roots, and I love using it as a glossing surface mixed with pastel and um, post color treatments in there just to kind of dilute it and give it tons of shine. It also like kind of slows that developer down so you're less likely to affect the natural and break the base. Yes, yes. That's such a great point. Um, especially when you really want to be able to achieve that lightness on people's ends and you want to use, you want to reach to permanent, but you have natural that you want to protect. That um, is, is such a great service. And I also really recommend that if your client has a crazy hair texture, that um, that it will help you kind of, it will help you apply that toner that's already gonna be difficult. So um, I, I, I love that, that aspect of the service. Absolutely, okay, why don't we get into looking at some photos, Maggie? Okay, let me bring this one up here. There she so, is. There she is. So we have this photo here, and we can see she has really light ends. She's got a bit of a root. How would you interpret this photo, Maggie? So to me, this is this is a little bit of a root shade, a root shadow, because we have so much depth, but she still has just as much light as she does dark. Yeah. Well, what do you say, Zena? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's like a root shadow or root shade. She yeah. just kind of has that little bit. It's not a tap. It's not a melt. It's not a stretch. <laughs> it's not a tap. It's more than a tap. It's not a melt. It's not as much as a melt. But who knows what she will call it when she brings it to you. It could be tapped around her hairline, though. It absolutely is tapped around her hairline. That's a good point. Um. We just have a question here. Can you get any gray coverage or blending with Color Touch? Yes, it's up to 50%. <laughs> I'm really glad we went before we went live. Yes, that's a great question. Thank you for yeah. asking that. So, so Collect Perfect isn't always the, um, the, the choice for gray. So remember that, that you can get up to 50% blend with, with Color Touch. <laughs> or up to 70% with Color Touch Plus. Still stay with the demi permanent. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's look at this next photo here. Oh, I love this one. So to me, this is really contrasting. So, yeah. right? Like, to me, this could be a stretch because I truly think that they are incorporating her natural into the look. Yeah. I think that they're working with her natural and they are just incorporated. Cause if, I wonder if she had that light right up her face, if it would be as flattering as that. Yeah, I agree. I think that a stretch would be, be a good way to go. Like rather than putting a root all over. Um, yes. I think we were talking about this earlier, but in something so contrasting like this photo, there might be times where you want to protect those blonde ends as well from getting like darker color on it. So do you want to talk a little bit about how you would do that? Um, absolutely. So I would, I would, would be you, I would use my lighter color on, I would apply it all in one step just to make sure that all those ends are safe and away from the dark color. Um, yeah, that's my tip for that. And did you have another one? A tip? Yeah. Um, I think for me, like if I'm applying a dark color on the root or like a dark color through the mids and I don't want to get anything on those ends, yeah. sometimes I'll put like conditioner on the ends or I'll put like post-color service, post-color treatments on the ends just to help protect it in case anything like gets on that bit. Or a gloss, a nice clear gloss, mm -hmm. lights. Yeah, so that'd be a great one something to um to just save it so that it's uh it's it's not going to touch that dark stuff because we know how important that light is yeah and that hair could be so porous and soak that right up too exactly exactly Ooh, i love this one um to me this is a shadow 
Yeah. Am I, I feel like they're definitely incorporating her natural. I think this is that perfect, like translucent level six that everybody wants their natural to be. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love this girl's hair. And I, to me, it reminds me of clients that I've had where I've like painted them or balayaged them. And then if I'm going to put any kind of like smudge or shadow or anything over them afterwards, I often go in with these girls with like a glossing service just because it, I don't know, I just feel like Illumina can like replicate natural hair so well because it has that violet rose base. And then adding that post color treatment with the 1.9% just really dilutes that color. So you're just getting like such a shimmer and such a gloss over those roots. So I don't know, to me, that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> Absolutely. And I like, I like the use of like gold in here. I, I think sometimes when, especially when we're working with root shadows, we can't be afraid of gold to add in our ends because if we add roots and ashy ends, we're going to feel double times darker. If we add roots and a nice incorporating some of the, the gold in their ends, we'll make them feel so much more light, especially in a scenario when you're not able to lift because the damage is too great. Okay, so we just have another question here, Maggie. How do you formulate for roots? I think root shades and shadows is the question. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I have a general rule I follow. Um, I, I like to keep it between two shades of each other. Um, I feel like that looks the most natural. Um, but not everybody is looking for the most natural look. So I think sometimes you can go a lot greater, um, but you just have to be a lot more careful with your application yeah absolutely i think that's that's a great tip um i think also for me when i'm formulating for a root shade or root shadow i tend to add like a bit of a neutral or a natural shade yes. and maybe like half of my tone or like something ashy just yes. to keep that natural hair replicated how about you we were talking about this when we were rehearsing yeah i love that, that was like the trick that i learned <laughs> that was the trick that you learned yeah you taught me well what what do you do tell me your your thing well you're right I always try to dilute because I don't want to see that full pigment especially if you have added highlights you will get like that say you're, you're choosing a really ashy color um which are kind of popular right now, like mushrooms or, or something like that. Like you don't almost want them to have the illusion of kind of that hollowness, that translucency. So in those instances, I, I definitely try to dilute with, with this with something that like to, to give it that beige, that grayish, that, that, <laughs> that everyone. <laughs> okay, can root shadow create illusion of more volume? That's a great question. I think it can, it by the where, where, but it depends on where you place it. Yeah. I think if you added too much root around someone's face, you could make them feel like they have less hair. But yeah. I think if you could definitely save out the front hair section for someone and, 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 and tone this something lighter and brighter, they'll feel like that it has volume and especially next to something darker will just make it feel even bigger. Yeah, it's like it's like painting to add depth, to add, yeah. like, fill in fill in areas. And I think also with people with fine hair too, if someone has really really fine hair, and say you do highlights super close to the scalp, sometimes yeah. you can, you feel like you see the scalp. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and something that our good friend Emily Baker says all the time: if you step into a dark a black room, it feels small. If you step into a light room, it feels huge. Yeah. So that you want to keep that in mind when you are doing hair as well. Yeah. So it's really just creating the illusion of light and dark. Okay. I think she's here. She's not even going to see that shout out. I know. Maybe she'll watch this back. <laughs> um, this to me, oh, I love this so much. I me too. It. Oh my gosh. She's beautiful. Uh, this is a melt. 100%. It's melty, delicious. Yeah, I love this. I wish this was my hair. <laughs> That's what this live has turned into. Maggie and Zena gush about hair. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but this is what this is what clients do. They look at these pictures. This girl's beautiful. We all want to be her. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do, right? But in reality, like this is definitely a melt. You can see there's different tones in there. You can see there's different kind of tones coming down through those mids. Absolutely. So that's I, a really good call out for this is that there is depth in the mids. So that is something to look for, whether your client is saying root tap or root shadow, if there's depth in the mid, like that is a darker look. So you want to make sure that they're prepared for that also. Yeah. And you know what? I point that out in my consultation. I like show them what I'm, I tell them what I'm seeing in this photo. I'm like, oh, I can see that the root's a bit darker. She's got a bit of like an in-between tone here. Like, you know, we just got to point that out. And it's not, it's not like a problem that you call it two different things. Like, you're not trying to tell someone that they're wrong. You're just yeah. telling them what you, like, how you interpret it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh, she's just tapped. Don't you think? Sorry, what did you say, Maggie? Is that just a tap? <laughs> oh, I, I think so, yeah. I think that's just a tap, too. Because that's... That's really high. Yeah, it's very high. But I love the I love the depth that it gives. It, it really ties in her eyebrows. Mm -hmm. It it makes like the, I don't know if if that light would look as natural on her if it didn't have the roots. Yeah, it almost makes it look brighter too, like you were mentioning before. Absolutely, and so does the, the ring light. <laughs> <laughs> so does the editing. <laughs> um, so we have a question here, Maggie. Okay. What about guy lights? Guy lights? <laughs> 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 roots. <laughs> I think guy lights always need to have a little bit of root, to be honest. Yeah. I know I always feel like there's room, but I think the, if, 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 if you need to, however you need to get there, I've actually heard some people telling me they're bringing back the cap. I've heard that a lot, that. too. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe that's the answer for the guy lights. I personally think men look really good with like natural looking hair. So I think for men, like tying this into roots, I think men look really good maybe with like a bit of roots and maybe some guy lights on the ends, if that's what we want to call it, or some man bray on those ends. <laughs> hombre. Some hombre. I just think guys look really good natural, but that's just my personal opinion. I agree. I agree. A little bit of sun kiss. That's like nothing too wild. But I mean, do go off guys, whatever you want. <laughs> you do you. You do you. Um, this one's dramatic to me. This is dramatic, like contrasting high roots, and we can see the breakage from here. We know this hurts Selena's hair. If we all of us watch this happen in, on <laughs> in the in the media, I can see like some short pieces around her face. For sure. Well, you know what I love about this picture? I love that we can see those short pieces. It's true. It's real. Yes. And so I, I also think, again, the suitability for this one, I love the incorporation of something close to her natural to tie in all her features and really make this look suitable to her. To her. Like you like said earlier, Zena, there's a blonde for everyone. We just have, you just have to find it. Yeah, absolutely. Any skin tone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love this one. I think this. Um, I think this one is another stretch to me because th this is a real incorporation of her natural. Um, it's a way to tie in all this all the light into her dark face um, while, while giving her those, those beautiful, like pretty long light pieces in her dark hair. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, if anyone's putting like a root on her, it's probably just to maybe like blur out any lines at this point. Like she doesn't need a root. Right. I find sometimes in the darkest faces, uh, the root shade, shadow tap, whatever you would like to call it is, 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 is integral because we really see those lines because there's so much contrast. Mm -hmm. Right. And especially in this case, this would be difficult because you would have to put almost a level four by to get close to the root and to be lifting that out. 
Yeah, so there's a question here then, Maggie. Um, would adding a root make it harder to lighten later? Oh, yeah, it can. <laughs> it can. So it's important to, um, to talk to your client about what they specifically need, whether it's gray coverage or if they're just adding depth that, that they don't have. Um, again, that's why Color Touch, our Demi, is my favorite choice for any type of root depth because it is the easiest to lift out and will eventually wash out of your hair. Um, but we, I definitely understand that's not an option for everybody. I don't want to say that you're not entitled to a root shade just because you have gray. <laughs> up to 50% gray with, um, for Color Touch. But um, like you were saying with Illumina, you can get a blend to 100% like coverage on 70% gray. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I also think Illumina has a truly beautiful grow out um, and a little bit easier to lift because it is such a cool base. Yeah. Well, and I think with if it gets harder to start lifting out color as the sessions continue, that's kind of where you start to direct your clients with more of like maybe a room. Maybe we start to, when those mids don't lift out as much, maybe we start to incorporate like another tone in there just to have everything more blended. Absolutely. It might be, um, it might be the time where like a lot of these instances, you might be thinking to yourself, do I need to fill before, like, do I need to fill before I add these roots? If, if she is, was a global blonde or, or you just put in all these new highlights that are now level nine and mm -hmm. you're going to five over top of them. So in that case, if my client's going to be coming back in six to eight weeks to add more highlights, am I going to worry about filling for longevity? No, because I'm not going to make my job harder to lift it out. Yeah. Um, but if someone is looking to kind of step away from color a little bit, have a little bit more time in between appointments, a little bit more flexible, and you do want to have longevity in that tone, you would need to think about um, uh, uh, doing something that would be harder to uh to achieve oh nick says love the new back to natural technique using kp absolutely yes that is a great guide for formulation i believe that's in our book but i know for sure it's on the app um so it's basically just a guide to show you like exactly what formula to use if someone wants to go right back to their natural and in this case we're often doing that because we want to incorporate their natural or a little bit amplified version of that. Yes. Okay, what do you think about that photo, Maggie? Cool. Well, she's got, it, I feel like this is a smudge. It's like a little bit more than a tap, a little bit less than a shadow. And it feels like there's fresh highlights underneath. I don't know if you ever do this, but sometimes I often, as I'm going through the hair, I'll sometimes often like smudge some areas, tap some areas, yeah. and like incorporate all of those techniques like that. Definitely. And so it, it, it kind of ends up looking a bit more like organic and a bit more natural of, of a root, I suppose. Absolutely. I think the whole point is that we're supposed to be stumped. <laughs> natural is that her natural did they add it in who knows <laughs> yeah exactly and I think I think that's the whole point of having this conversation too is when your clients come in with these photos it's just really to assess what they're coming in with what this picture is don't get so caught up in the terminology and just execute it how you think you would do it there's going to be new buzzwords every week but the tried and true techniques that you know are, are always going to be there. Yes. Um, Nick says, great for reverse balayage. So I think he's talking about the back to natural Coastal yeah. Perfect formulation. And you recently, you just did a class on reverse balayage, Maggie, right? I did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, po it's really popular. Um, I find it's a nice way to modernize your clients that have been maybe coming to get traditional highlights for a while. Um, it's a nice way to offer them something a little different. Um, reverse balayage is also great when you do have gray coverage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in, and, and maybe a color melt. <laughs> oh, Nick, that's exactly, exactly. Baby lights, you think baby lights are new? Nick, Nick says he's been doing them for 32 years. Wow. Exactly. I yeah. think, I think reverse balayage can also be a really intimidating thing for a lot of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, um, it can get messy. So I think, and, and you, and, and whenever you're taking someone away from blonde, there's always fear. Yeah. There's always fear. How much, hopefully you know this client really well. And it's like, you know, they're not going to find, like, find you if you take all their, their lightness away. Well, I don't know if you've, but you've gotten this, but I've had clients who have been blonde for years. And now that this is such a trend, they'll show me photos of extremely con contrasting roots or extremely contrasting balayage. And um, I think that's where like consultation is so important because if I have a girl who's like this blonde, well, all over, and she shows me a picture of like this, which I see, which I get a lot, where yeah. they want a very dark root. Exactly. I think it's just really like dissecting what it is about these photos that they do want and and, uh, and interpreting it to what suits their hair. <laughs> a really good point, Dina, in this, and uh, like length really comes to play with roots. If you are a departmentalized salon, please just <laughs> your stylist what the length of this hair is going to be because the how much root you add depends on what what length will be left. It would be such a shame to have a miscommunication and have to go back and pump in those baby lights. Yes. Well, Maggie and I, we both come from departmentalized backgrounds. So we know how important that is. And out here in the West, like there isn't any departmentalized salons, but I think like the key takeaway is the consultation. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And I honestly am such a big believer in incorporating a little bit yourself. So just like, well, Canada West, like it's the best like signifier of what they should like a little bit of what they should have it's, mm -hmm. it's a good starting point yeah their natural color plays a part in choosing the root shade for sure definitely absolutely definitely because i've been i've gotten girls with like you know natural blondes showing me this dark <laughs> and i mean I, like if you go to that like one that we both really love that was really gold I, I, people, I've had people bring me that photo and they're like, oh, I want this ashy hair. <laughs> I want this light, bright, ashy hair. I'm like, nope, that doesn't exist, <laughs> but, but that's fine. Sometimes we just need to just clarify like, oh, what about this is ash to you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just all how we interpret it. Exactly, exactly. I mean, there's a thousand different types of colorblind out there. Yeah, totally. So here's our last picture, Maggie. What do you think about this? Ooh. Mm. This is lots of root. This is a healthy root. Yeah. Maybe a, maybe a stretch bordering on a melt. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree, because I kind of see some mid-tones in there. Definitely. Definitely. And, I mean, unfortunately, this is the back of her head, so it's hard to know, like, what they did, what detailing they did around her hairline. But um, that's a, that's a lot of root. If my client, if someone brought me that, I would be preparing them for darkness. <laughs> like, be really making sure that they they want um, that much dark. Okay, so we have people in the comments saying that it's a belt, so they agree with us. Yay! Get right, Nina. Well, I'm glad we're all in agreement on what this is because it can be it can be pretty hard to dissect these Pinterest photos sometimes. Exactly, I think sometimes it's the most overwhelming part, and it can stop the most like confident, educated stylist. Yeah, and I think it also can get a little intimidating when clients are bringing in these really amazing photos on Pinterest. So it's really just consulting. Breaking, breaking down, dissecting these photos. What are they? How can we translate it to this client? Yeah. Tell them what the thing that they're asking for will do for them and what it won't. Um, yeah, you, you, you're, the, you're the boss, right? Absolutely. Driving this, this car. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, do we have any other points to add, Maggie? Um, I feel like I just blacked out for 30 minutes. Um, but I hope we covered it all. I just think if there's anything we can depart on you today is that don't get caught up in buzzwords. You know what you're doing. You absolutely know what you're doing. Um, just look at the photo and dissect it into things that you can understand. And the, the consultation is just really key in all of this. Absolutely. Is my takeaway. Exactly. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Okay. So I think we answered all the questions. If we do have any questions that we haven't answered, I put our Instagrams up there. Feel free to reach out to one of us. Um, that's Maggie's Instagram right there at Maggie Melrose with three E's. <laughs> the other one was taken. <laughs> I'm Z Hair Warrior. And then make sure you're following Well of Canada West because we're going to be doing lots more Instagram lives from you guys. And we love coming on Modern Beauty Supply and doing these lives too. Thank you so much for having us, Modern. Thank you. I'm sure we'll be back again. Thanks. Have a great day.